Good day, so today I thought I'd do a video on axe geometry and how to make your axe cut well. Most axes produced today don't come very sharp. They don't have a very well finished edge, but also the geometry, the grind is too thick or too convex and fat. That's okay for splitting, but if you want a good cutting axe, you need to do some work. And that includes basically all brands, no matter how much you spend. So if I use this picture as an example, this is a splitting axe. This is a grind unsuitable for chopping. It's very thick, it's a little bit convex, and uh, ideal for splitting, but uh, this is too fat to penetrate into the wood very far. Here's a picture of a competition racing axe. This is an extremely thin grind. However, this is too thin for working axes. It will easily break on knots. A competition axe will cut a 30 centimeter log of poplar in uh, under a minute in skilled hands. This competition axe is 14 degrees for the primary bevel and then it has a very very small micro bevel at a slightly steeper angle. Here is an axe I use for work. It's about 20 degrees for the primary bevel with a secondary bevel of about 30 degrees. The secondary bevel is very small and the primary bevel is pretty flat. I'm not a fan of using uh, too much convexity in the edges I try and aim for filing flat, but unless you use a jig it will be slightly convex. I don't consciously try and convex up axes. It can very easily over convex an axe edge and uh, it will be very bouncy in the cut. I try and aim for as flat as possible and you'll feel it when you chop into the wood. It wants to pull itself in. It's a very different feeling and it cuts a lot deeper. So you can see the primary bevel. I normally aim for about 20 degrees minimum, but you can go a lot thinner on your primary bevel depending on the axe and uh, what you're using it for. But I use axes anywhere between 16 and 20 degrees for working. You can play around and experiment. You can always take more steel off and uh, you'll find what works best for your woods. <clears throat> Here you can see the secondary bevel. It's very, very small, just along the very edge. This is a slightly steeper angle. This helps toughen up the edge and stop chipping and rolling. If you keep the secondary bevel as small as you can without having issues of rolling or chipping, then the axe will cut extremely well. I normally aim for like half a millimetre around, you know, ballpark um, and it is put on with a stone. So you can see how to cut a primary bevel on an axe. You put the file down flat with the eye, lift it up slightly and then file. On most axe patterns this will give you roughly a 20 degree angle. It may take some time to remove enough material and you're really aiming to get that bevel as flat as possible right down to the very edge. If you want to use a gauge to measure the angle you're filing, then it's worth getting one, but uh, the most important thing is you experiment, and uh, sometimes it helps to have a log uh, next to where you're filing, so you can test the axe as you're uh, grinding it. For the secondary bevel, again, you put the axe flat with the eye, and then lift up to a steeper angle. Um, you'll find what works for you. And uh, you only want to do a couple of strokes for your, your secondary bevel. It's very easy to get carried away with this and uh, cut a, a very fat secondary bevel on. So minimum strokes. With a file, I've only do one or two, maybe three tops. But uh, if I know it's a good steel on the axe, I'll just use a stone and it will be very, very small the secondary bevel. Again, you'll find what works for you and what would you're cutting. When you file a primary bevel on most axes with flat cheeks, you end up with what's called a chisel grind, which is a, a uniform grind all the way across the bit. You can also grind a chisel grind onto an axe with convex cheeks. Um, for cutting softwood it can release easier, but uh, when you grind a, a bevel onto most old axes with convex cheeks, you'll end up with what's called a banana grind, where the middle of the grind is much thicker than the corners or the heel and the toe. It's not just the angle of your primary grind that's important, it's also the size. So these are a couple of Tuatai China axes I've ground up for training. And this first one has a bit bigger chisel, 
you can see the chisel grind comes back into the cheeks about one and a half centimeters. This was cutting poplar really well. It popped the chip and didn't stick. However, because of the shortage of poplar, we were cutting uh, Corsican pine, which I found to be a much more brittle wood. It didn't like to chip as easy. And this acts with the smaller chisel effectively is thinner in profile because of that. And uh, the smaller chisel cut much better because it's not trying to bust out a chip as early as the other axe. It's um, getting a bit deeper before it starts to get thicker. So now we're going to have a look at some axe geometries. Here's what I describe as a, a thin axe. This has flat cheeks. It uh, is mostly flat until it starts to taper up to the eye. And these are really good for limbing. They're not good for splitting. They're ideal for chopping smaller trees like uh, you know, around 8 inches diameter. When you get above 12 inches they really struggle to remove the chips. So these type of axes are really good for small trees and limbing. This is what I'd call a wedge axe. This is a flat wedge profile from the edge to the eye. And uh, these are really good for general purpose use. They can split well. They can also chop very well. They're ideal for chopping um, most woods and uh, they're much better in larger wood where you want to remove chips. The wedge profile helps pop the chips out. You can see this wedge profile has a flat cheeks so when I lay the file flat across the cheeks you can see it's touching on all points. Wedge profile axes are easy to make um, however they are a bit more sticky than the convex cheek axe. Here's a convex cheeked axe. Not many people make them these days. I think the only place I know who still make them are the Basque axes. Most of the old American axes had convex cheeks. The convex cheeks have all the advantages of the wedge axe however because of the higher center and uh, less friction on the on the sides they cut a little bit deeper and they also they don't stick as much these are ideal for general purpose heavy chopping and splitting if you're cutting wood over 12 inches you really want a convex cheap dax in my opinion phantom bevels are also uh, found on some of the older american axes again same concept they there's less friction on the sides which makes it uh, cut deeper and uh, get stuck less often. Some modern splitting axes have this style as well. This is an Austrian made splitting axe and you can see that uh, again there's less friction on the sides. I really love this style. Um, they're brilliant and uh, they rarely get stuck. Okay, so let's talk a bit more in depth about edge geometry. If you design the perfect axe edge, assuming everything was perfect um, and you didn't have to deal with knots, you'd essentially go for a flat grind. This is what would be called a flat grind. There's no change in angle across the edge. Of course, in reality, you need secondary or micro bevels to help toughen it up. So when you add a secondary or micro bevel, you essentially make the axe edge a lot thicker because uh, the change in angle means when it hits the wood, there's a lot more steel backing it up. This is less likely to chip and roll. The convex grind also does the same as having a, a secondary or micro bevel. However, I'm not such a fan of convexing up my axes heavily. A heavy convex, I think, makes the axe bouncy in the cut. It also is more likely to deflect and glance off the surface if you don't get the angle absolutely correct. So a lot of axes come 
with a very fat convex grind. I understand why it's done that way because a, a fat convex is very robust and companies need to, like Granthus Bucks, are selling axes all over the world. When I get a new axe with a fat convex, essentially what I do is file as much of the cheek off as possible, as, as flat as possible, and then I'm adding the micro bevel or secondary bevel, as you can see in the blue. You can see how much thinner this makes the axe and uh, less resistance in the cut. So when you're chopping into large wood, it's not just about trying to make the axe cut really deep. It's also important how the axe chips. The goal of chopping through a log is not generally to cut straight through it. It's You want to remove chips to get to the middle and break it. So you can see here, as the axe goes in, it levers out the chips. And that leverage is represented with the red lines. It breaks the fibres. And uh, a thicker axe can actually sometimes go deeper because it's breaking the fibres and then removing the pressure on the cheeks and allowing the axe to travel travel in further. Of course, it depends on the wood. Um, some wood that's very stringy doesn't want to chip easily. A wood that chips really nice is ash, and uh, chopping ash is quite good. Even though it's a hard wood, it chips nicely, which makes it chop a lot easier, versus uh, sometimes a soft wood um, with knots. Because the knots hold the chip in like a piece of rebar, the axe won't pop the chip and remove that pressure. So you can see on your second hit coming around the other side, that pops the chip out, removing a lot of the pressure on the cheeks. And allowing the axe to go in a little bit deeper. So the majority of penetration will be on the right side and then your chip side on the left, if, assuming you're right-handed. Um, and your, your right side will be where you make most of the depth of your cut. But you will get a little bit of depth on your chip side as well. But each time the axe chips well, it removes that pressure. Whereas if you have an axe that doesn't chip well, you're just slamming the axe into the same cut over and over again. And it's not really going that much deeper because it's getting a lot of friction off passing through that uh, chip. Really thin axes do have their place though, and that's cutting smaller wood because... Because they are a lot thinner in geometry, they're not trying to chip the wood so much, but they have less friction passing through the fibres because they're thinner. And uh, often you'll be able to cut through smaller wood in one hit, like a three inch limb. And that's where they, they're more efficient, is because you're not trying to chip, there's less friction, um, and it, it passes through a minimal resistance. However, when you get into the big wood, then you're just slamming it into the same place without making any progress because you're, you're not chipping and clearing clearing that pressure out of the way. So I've tried to represent here is what I'm feeling when I use a very convict stacks, and that's a almost bouncy effect. So when you have a very um, thick secondary bevel or um, thick convex on your axe edge, what it's essentially doing is putting a lot more pressure right at the edge than a essentially flat racing axe would. And you can feel that pressure. Um, it's almost like the axe is trying to be spat out and uh, it's a bit more like you're mashing through the fibres than, than cutting in. When you use a, a racing axe that's um, very thin, in most woods it feels like it's almost trying to run away from you or pull away from you. It, it sinks in very easily. Whereas with a convex edge, it feels like you have to force it. So these are some of my thoughts on it, and um, Hopefully it makes sense. If you've got any questions, uh, leave it down in the comments and I'll try and answer it as best as I can. So thank you for watching and I uh, hope you enjoyed. I think they're good lines. <laughs>